Hi, I'm Robert and this is my chain link fence tutorial, which is one of the ideas for my top 10 uses for leftover sprues video. Chain link fences are a particular type of wire fence that are a lot of fun to reproduce in your terrain. It's actually such a ubiquitous look that you can use it in any era, starting from around about 1844, which was when the chain link fence was initially developed, right up until the far, far future, apocalyptic or otherwise. Building a fence using sprues as the posts will give you a fence appropriate for about 28 millimeters, but the method does work for a variety of other mini scales. To build a chain link fence, you'll need wire mesh, similar to the kind used in things like vent maintenance, rodent and insect control, and also protecting tree trunks. You'll need some sprue pieces, all cut to the intended height of your fence, with any outward branches cleaned off. You'll also need a pin vise drill, and a few different options for drill bits would also be a plus. A lot of thin wire, like what you'd use in pinning, a clippers for the wire, and for general purposes. You'll also need something for cutting the wire mesh. You should use a hobby scalpel and the clippers for this. You could use a pair of scissors or other cutting implement, but cutting the mesh can blunt your tools, so I prefer something replaceable like a scalpel and then a strong clippers. You'll also need some glue that works with both metal and plastic. And finally, a ruler or a cutting mat with measurements marked on it. To start off, you need to decide how high and wide your chain link fence is going to be. While you're doing this, you also need to be aware of how your posts will look and how many of them there will be in the wall. So when I started working on this, I first worked out the height I wanted the fence to be based on the 28mm mini that I wanted to use it with. I cut a few sprue bits to the fence's height. I then placed these along the wire mesh looking to see roughly how far apart they needed to be for them to look right. The ratio of the height of a post to the distance from one post to the next should be about four to five. So I went for four centimeters high to about five centimeters wide. Once you've marked out the height of the wire mesh, it's time to decide how many posts you want. So if you decided that you wanted four posts and they're each five centimeters apart, then you would go 15 centimeters plus the width of one piece of sprue along the wire mesh. You'll notice that each post is being placed with its left side flush to the five centimeter marks to ensure uniform spacing of the posts. Mark out your measurements, trying to ensure that they are accurate, and then cut the wire mesh. I kept the wire mesh flush to the cutting mat so that I could see through it and follow the lines of the cutting mat underneath so that it was a lot more accurate and easy to use. Now, there are two ways you can attach the mesh to the fence posts. One is to very carefully glue them, while the other is to pin them. Now, gluing is much simpler to do, but because of the mesh, you have to be careful about how much glue you use. Too much, and it can easily ruin the details in the mesh. And you also have a problem where it's a little bit more likely to come apart if you regularly have wear and tear on your terrain. I'm going to show you the pinning method, which on the other hand, the mesh is less likely to come off, but the kind of pinning I'm going to be doing can be time consuming, and to be honest, at times it's kind of frustrating due to how the wire has to be manipulated. You're going to need to do a lot of accurate pinning. So if you don't know how to pin, have a look at my tutorial on that and then come back. Using the drill bit that's preferably over one millimeter in width, drill holes into the bottom of each of the poles so that you can pin the fence into its base later on. Next, get your smallest drill bit that will still allow your thinnest wire to fit into the hole made. I used a 0.8 millimeters drill bit. Then you're going to get your pin vise again and drill two small holes side by side at intervals going up each post. It's best to keep it the same on every post, but otherwise it's really your choice as to how many of these you include. Next, clip short lengths of thin wire and bend them so that the two ends are facing the same way. Put this piece of bent wire into a set of two holes. Now this isn't really easy to do. 
so use the pliers to make sure that they fit fairly snugly. If the piece of wire is too long on either side, clip it and try again and keep going until just by tapping it in, it can fit very snugly into the sprue bit. Repeat this process for all of the pairs of holes on that particular sprue bit. When you're happy with that, layer the wire mesh over the sprue poles, like you did when you were measuring out the wire fence before, and make sure that it is accurate to your earlier test. Next, glue the bent wire and insert the bent piece of wire into the two holes through the wire mesh. You might need to cut a small hole in the wire mesh to get the piece of wire through. I, I didn't actually for this tutorial at any point. But if you do, be careful because you might rip the wire mesh completely. And since the whole point is to have something which holds the wire mesh to the sprue bits, well, you know. Now repeat this process until you've attached every point on each of your poles to your mesh, making sure that the poles are parallel to each other and that you've spaced them correctly. I actually did all of this directly over the cutting mat so that I could be completely accurate. If there is any overlap of mesh around the end poles or at the top or bottom of the fence, now is the time to deal with it. If you intend on bending the fence, then you can do it now. When making a bend, you must make sure that you keep the posts on the inner angle of the bend. This isn't just because that's what every chain link fence you will ever see looks like. It's also because it's actually good engineering to keep it on the inside. Nice to know that there are some things us gamers can learn from reality. And that's it for the basics of building a chain link fence. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want to learn how to turn this into an electric fence, like the one shown here, or how to base it so that you can still transport it to your local gaming nights, then please watch part two of my chain link fence tutorial here. Subscribing is a good idea for more videos like this, and you can contact me on manticmoments at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at manticmoments. Thanks for watching.